Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. This video is a part of the particle tracing module and today we are going to talk about mathematical particle tracing. Mathematical particle tracing is little bit different from the original particle tracing module and we have already talked about this particle tracing module in our previous videos. So in those videos we actually talked about what are the equations we are solving in particle tracing module and we we have seen that we are basically solving for the Newton's second law the force equation and there are multiple force fields those are available in ComSol and you can actually modify or customize your force fields so we have talked much about those things in the previous videos and if you watch those videos then it will be helpful so without delay let us go to today's topic that is mathematical particle tracing here you can see we are basically having a first order differential equation and there is no force term so in this mathematical particle tracing we are not basically solving the Newton's second law but we are solving for the particle velocity or you can say from here we can have an information about the locus of the particle if we know the velocity with respect to time for say then what will happen we can actually locate the position of the particle at different times and then if we add it up we will get the locus of the particles many times this kind of thing are needed and we will talk about those things in the upcoming videos but today let us talk about a particular model which is already available in the application library of ComSol. So this model is called Rossler Attraction or Attractor. So we are not going into the physics of this particular device. Rather, we'll show you the mathematical things. So initially I have shown you this first order differential equation which is there in the mathematical particle tracing. So we need to know about two things what is this q and v vectors so v vectors is the velocity field or velocity vector and q is the position of the particle so here if you see uh, we have they have actually taken uh, this option this particular node which is called a release from grid and from grid release actually the positions are given as a range of particle positions so uh, you can see q y 0 so in the y direction you have the its kind of position you are putting i mean the multiple positions so by this range you are actually putting you can see in the range we have 3 comma 5 by 30 comma 8 so it will go from 3 to 8 and the interval is your 5 by 30 and let us see the particle properties so here yeah, particle properties means we only need to define the velocity vector because if you look at the equation we only have the time derivative of the position vector and the, that is equated with the velocity vector so we need to define those things in the particle properties so v is a vector it will have three components that is x y and z components and we have actually they have actually define the velocity vectors or the velocity components of the vector along three different directions that those are x y this is x y and z direction so uh, i mean this is coming from this physics of the rossler attractor but again i'm telling we are not going into the physics but what we know is we have three components x y and z three components of the velocities and this is how those velocities are changing where x, y and z are the Cartesian coordinates and a, b, c are the parameters that is relevant for this particular device. And the parameters are enlisted here that is 0 0.2, 0 0.2 and 5.7. So you can see here in the particle properties we have actually defined the velocity components of the vector and then we can actually able to solve the differential equation that is dq dt equal to the velocity vector 
and from this node that is released from grid we have the information of the particle position so the problem is now properly posed and then what we have to do is we have to do a meshing this is for the learning purpose that's why we have taken a very coarse mesh and then uh, we are actually solving it for 10 seconds so let us just click on compute so it will start simulating and we will have the locus of the particles so yeah simulation is done now let us look at the particle trajectory say this one so initially we go to zero time step so at the zero time step what we see is yeah there is nothing because at zero we don't have any anything but then with with respect to time you will have more and more particles and actually you will have the information about their position because we are basically solving the change in position dq dt that means change in position that will be a function of the velocity vector and that is what we are solving so if you see with respect to time the positions are changing and if you add up the positions then you get the trajectory and let us proceed faster say we see what's happening at one second so you can say particle is coming like this and let's see what happens at two seconds every one second interval let us see and visualize so i'll just zoom it this portion so that you can see properly so yeah at this is at two seconds say now we do at say three seconds let's see what happens at three seconds so we move on yeah this is three seconds click on plot so you can see the particles are changing positions and locus is being formed we see at 6.2 say somewhere so it's already trajectory is already created so let us look so at some lower time step say we look at 4.3 so yeah here you can see this is not yet totally formed in the z directions so we show somewhere say 4.66 this is forming the trajectory or the locus at 5.18 this is how it looks so as you progress with time it will solve the differential equation and it will give you the information about the trajectories so this is how the particles are moving under the application of the velocity field that is defined here in the particle tracing particle properties so you can actually use any kind of equations for the velocity field this could also be a function of temperature because you can see here there is no function of temperature but as the differential equation has the independent variable as time so we can actually have the velocity vector field which is a function of time and that will also work so i hope this particular video gave you basic information about mathematical particle tracing but we are yet to know about where exactly these things are important and why exactly a mathematical particle tracing module is separately given in COMSOL. So we'll continue this particular thing in the upcoming videos. Till then, I would request you to subscribe to my channel because if you subscribe to my channel, then I will get more motivation to upload videos. Thank you.